you should always be learning about the shiny new thing because everything you know about IT will become irrelevant after a few years. And I'm surprised Oren didn't laugh out loud with that one. But the, the concept is, as I mentioned, you choose the tools you're adding in your toolbox for being able to go off and do some troubleshooting. You're augmenting that based on your surrounds and your environments. Because you've done an assessment, it's important for me to be successful in my job to know A, B, and C. And then as you shift your focus of the job throughout your different progressions of your career at that company, those tools are going to not disappear. They still become relevant. It's, again, funny trying to troubleshoot something with my kids at home. I use them as the Gen Z slash Gen Alpha, whatever the next generation is, for the way that we've classified them. They have no clue about networking and about DNS, about Ethernet packets and how things are routed between things. But even just today, setting up my freaking laptop, I had DNS problems. It's always DNS. Trying to do hardwired. So against my better judgment, I had to go off and use wireless because I did my troubleshooting steps. But they just all came to me like that. So choosing which tools to put inside your tool bit directly applies to your current environment, but just keep on using them and don't forget about them. The second half of that myth statement, though, is about the shiny new thing. And this is where potentially you can get overwhelmed. But as Oren like, it likes to discuss with me and our one on ones that we have, it's a matter of putting it, the new shiny thing in context. Does it solve problems that are gonna that I'm faced with right now better, more efficiently, more cost effectively, or faster? If not, eh, hang on to it. Understand how it works for when someone asks you the question, as opposed to being dismissive. But definitely keep your eye on the ball because things are coming fast. They continue to come fast, and so that shiny new thing is potentially going to become more relevant. Now, Oren's perspective is more so about where this falls into the spectrum during your career development. So, Oren, go ahead, cover off that particular piece there. So, the way I like to think of it is that when you start your career, you need to learn everything you can. You need to learn absolutely everything. Why? Because at the beginning of your career, you don't have a portfolio of problems that you're really good at solving. You don't know what your career is when you start. You don't know what you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis or a year-to-year -year basis. So you need to go and learn everything. You find the things that you like. You find the things that you're very interested in. You find the things that you're not. So at the beginning of your career, you do feel that way. And one of the things to remember about your career is how your posture towards your career obviously needs to change over the course of your career. And how you approach what you learn and what you choose to learn at the beginning of your career is going to be different from what you do when you're in the middle of your career. So at the beginning, you're learning everything. But remember this idea, IT is about problem solving. And as you develop your career more, you're going to understand that there's a certain general set, which increases slowly, of problems that you need to solve on a regular basis. And that means that as new technologies come along, you contextualize the technology in terms of, is this something that helps me solve one of those problems I need to regularly solve. Because there's a lot of technologies that come out that solve problems that nobody has. And they look very cool because marketing departments need something to talk about at technology events. But it might actually be something that doesn't actually solve any of the problems that you've got. So as you're developing your career, what you should be doing in terms of looking at new technologies is you definitely look at them. But instead of going, is that technology cool or not? Is Sammy doing a session on it and it's excellent? Is Dave going to talk about it and it's interesting? Well, those might be absolutely true, but they also might be. And Tech Mentor, of course, is very much more focused on the practicalities of what you're actually going to use rather than the fluffy stuff. And then sometimes. Uh, one of the things about technologies and mature technologies, if you think about the businesses you work for, IT went and solved the core business problems that most businesses have 
when IT got started. Simple things like how do we communicate in the office? We send emails. How do we store and retrieve documents? All of these core things, those are older, more mature technologies. So even though we see new technologies coming out, the new technologies almost always tend to be addressing peripheral problems, problems that aren't original core business problems. They might be of interest to your business, but whether or not ChatGPT is available today or not won't stop your business from functioning. If Exchange Online is not available, there's probably a much more of a problem. But when you're assessing technologies, you can sit there and go, OK, well, let's take AI. Now, you're sitting there, AI, how do I use AI as an IT pro? Well, the likelihood is that in your environment are a whole lot of scripts that predate when you were working there. And some of them you won't touch because one of the things we learn in IT is if we don't understand something entirely, we probably don't go and mess with it. Well, one of the nice things about AI is AI does code interpretation and sometimes can go and explain what that script does. So you might be able to take AI and analyze existing parts of your environment to say, OK, I understand that. Maybe I can optimize it. And that's the other thing to remember with any technology is that we all know that the solution that's probably working in our environment was someone's first best guess at trying to get it to work. One of the things that we do as we go further in our career is we come back and we might re-architect an existing solution so that it's actually better built instead of essentially running the company website off an access database that's sitting there in the back office that someone wrote in the 1990s. But always look at every new technology and pay attention to what's coming out. Get passing familiarity in case someone asks you about it, but don't go down the rabbit hole of each new technology. If you went down the rabbit hole of the metaverse and how you could make the metaverse work for your water company, you probably wasted some time. <laughs> I, I will point out that it is uh, it was exactly 1127 at a Microsoft conference and you heard the word AI. So that's a good 28 minutes in uh, besides having the central focus on AI. So thank you for at least holding back your enthusiasm for AI until halfway through the session. Um, great examples, though, like exa uh, the the practicality, like uh, as I like to say, uh, operations folks, we need to see the vision and the horizon for what's coming and how it's going to impact our organization. But we're more directly concerned with the stuff that's closer from that horizon that's there. And then having the knowledge of being able to filter that to say, how does it apply for my work environment that, that uh, is there? And don't even, we can have a very long discussion about the whole concept of problems that were solved by IT and what works and when is it going to be the right time to go off and change and stuff, but we don't have time for that particular discussion right now. Now, in case you don't know, like Sammy alluded to at the very beginning, Oren has written 40 plus books on a particular subject, uh, Windows Server and others, obviously. He doesn't have them in his background because the shells would fall over uh, if he had that many. Of course, he's going to try to find some now for us. Um, that's there. But uh, he also has a very interesting perception on uh, study. <laughs> Are you ready to go, my friend? Uh, very, very interesting perception on the next myth. What is the role of ongoing education and career growth? Uh, and what's the parallel to that for your career maintenance perspective? 